Well, God is good. Amen. Even during this time of the year. You know what I learned? I learned something this, I mean, besides all the stuff I've learned in the era of man, but I learned something when I was preparing this message. Like the day before I was preparing this message, I just started thinking because I just started getting, you know, for the last, I want to say, three or four weeks, I've been getting people telling me, man, it just, you know, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. And then I asked them, like, but don't that happen every time this year? And everybody's like, well, yeah, yeah. It's, and they start thinking, like, man, yeah, you're right. And so I went before the Lord. Whatever, it's that many people. I went before the Lord and I said, okay, God, tell me what's going on. Is it that because I decided to do a record, but it can't be because some of the people contacted me are from wherever. You know, they're from all over. I was like, so what, what is it? And God said, look at you. So I start thinking. And I start thinking about a cup, just, you know, and I always use me. I ain't putting nobody else out there but me. But just maybe a few days prior, a decision I was about to make because I was mad and angry and hot. And I, you know, I don't make decisions like that. I'll go ask the Lord, but man, I didn't even want to ask the Lord. I was going to make the decision. I was like, then when the Lord told me to think, I thought, and I feel like that this time every year. This time. My tolerance level is gone. I don't like people no more. <laughs> I go back to, excuse my expression, fat Craig days. That's what that, my kids called me when I was bigger. <laughs> but I go back to those, I, I go back to those emotions. I'm like, wait, there's something to this. It, and it's, it doesn't have anything to do with me recording. It's something else. And that's what this message is about. So look at somebody that says, season of sabotage. <laughs> Adamantbeliever.com forward slash season of sabotage. God has brought so many of us out of so many things. Yeah. Amen. Has God brought you out of anything? Yeah. Amen. We are not the same as we were when we arrived here. God has been faithful to bring us to a good place. Many of us came from sorted upbringings and bad family curses that could have yielded us inoperable or failures and yet we are sound, strong, and doing better than we ever expected. Yeah. Amen. Better than we, and you know how you know you're doing better than you ever expected? Because just look at your, your other family members. Yeah, that could have been you. But you made some decisions here and there, and it changed things. And now you're doing better than you even expected. We are growing in the knowledge of God and our purposes are being fulfilled. We are rejoicing because we are walking in the direct path of who God created us to be. Deuteronomy 12 and 7. Yeah, you ought to clap. I'm talking about you. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about us. Yeah, you ought to be rejoicing. You're walking in the direct path of who God created you to be. Deuteronomy 12 and 7 says, And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Has God blessed anybody since they made the decision to buy into the sound doctrine of the Adamant Believers Council? I thought I'd get more hand claps than that, Sister Paz, but that's okay. Amen. Amen. I take that. Oh! However, at this time each year, the sneaky spirit of self-sabotage starts whispering in our ears, trying to awaken the trauma of our past. This time every year. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, does what? Walketh about doing what? 
seeking whom he may devour. And his way of doing this is so evil because all he does is roars. He roars to make the pack run and the one that can't keep up with the pack gets got. The lone roamer the one that can't plug in the fellowship. The one that can't buy into the strength that surrounds them. The one that can't be like the others is the one that they get. Growing up with trauma can cause us to get used to it. Our minds and bodies will even believe that when things are going too good, something bad needs to happen. Man, I'm preaching in here. Yes, that's your trauma. Things can be going good. Why did you do that? Things were going good. But it was too good. It didn't feel right. How does good not feel right? Because growing up, in foolishness will create an appetite for foolishness. Growing up in trauma will create an appetite for trauma. House too quiet, everybody getting along, I gotta start an argument. This postures us to create an issue because we need to feel conflict or strife in order to feel normal. Isaiah 40, 43 and 18 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. That's not you anymore. So why are you about to do something that you used to do? Amen. Amen. Why are you... You're looking for trauma because trauma feels normal. In other words, things can seem too good to be true. But check this out, especially when we were raised to feel we are unworthy of good. If you was raised in a house where you were verbally abused, told you was ugly, you ain't gonna be nothing, you make me sick, you bad as your old daddy, you this and that, and you heard these things, they make you feel unworthy of good. So you come to a church and uh, like this and we equipped you and you good, you are, you, you're doing good and everything and then you look up and you just get nervous because things are going good but you were told or taught that they couldn't get good for you. And so you mess it up. This can cause us to subconsciously think thoughts and create situations that cause issues. Yeah, I knew it was going to get quiet. Y'all need to pay attention to this. Amen, because we all, children, you know, this generation, we're a little different. Most of us in here are children of dysfunction, right? And so you have a functional situation. Now, God has given you a functional situation, but man, dysfunction just felt so normal. Yeah. Luke 6 and 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Treasure, what is a treasure? That's somewhere where you lock precious things away. Things that are dear to you. A treasure. You can't bring forth anything that you don't have in the treasure. So if dysfunction is in that treasure, you're going to try to bring forth dysfunction. Yeah, that's why if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. God's supposed to, God is supposed to give us a good treasure. Change everything. 
But you know why you keep pulling out trauma out of your treasure? Because you never open your treasure up to the Lord. <laughs> you never let him go through your things and switch things out. I'm preaching that. Man. You didn't expose yourself to the Lord. And so you still got upbringing evil, dysfunction in your treasure. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. You gonna say what's in your heart. Whether it makes sense or not. Whether you should or not. Whether it's trauma based or not. If it's in your heart, that's what you're gonna speak. Can I keep preaching in here? Beware, saints. Look at somebody and say, beware. beware. The Halloween season. Ooh, boy, this is something. It's not fun and games. Now, I picked this season to do my message. So, yeah, weirdness has something to do with the season. And the season I picked the message. But I picked the message to bring the power of God to this season. Yeah. Amen. Because I get tired of the demon devil worshiping stuff the demonology and all of that amen some folks are scared of Halloween and scared of demons man if you are scared of a demon you're bound by one <laughs> bottom line because a demon is smoking mirrors they, their power is gone Man, quit watching scary movies. Hey Amen. They showing all of them. Somebody watched Pumpkinhead and can't even look at the screen. Hey Amen. Throw that pumpkin at me. I got a knife. I'm going to cut it up and make a pie. That's a pumpkin, dude. Scared of no fruit. Vegetable. Is it a vegetable or a fruit? I know that's been a debate down through history, is it? What is, which one is it? I'm looking at Evelyn, you know. It's a fruit. Well, then what is a tomato? That's a fruit. See? They just be making stuff up. So, this Halloween season is not fun. The Halloween season is not fun and games, but there is a hidden evil that is a part of this time of year. In order to truly understand what this season is all about, you must go back to its real origin, the Celtic Samhain, Samhain or Samhain Festival. Okay? I know I've done Halloween messages in here, but this one's different. As millions of children and adults participate in the fun of Halloween on the night, of October 31st, few will be aware of its ancient Celtic roots in the Samhain festival. In Celtic Ireland about 2,000 years ago, Samhain was the division of the year between the lighter half, which is summer, and the darker half, which is winter. At Samhain, the division between this world and the other world was at its thinnest, allowing spirits to pass through. Yeah. So that's what this is all about this time of year. It's, there's a thinner barrier. Now, this is folklore, I'm telling you, but it doesn't matter if it's folklore if witches and warlocks and all of that are congregating and praying these spirits into our realm. You see what I'm saying? They're getting the spirits together whether it's thin or not. They believe it's thin, so this is the time they congregate. The family's ancestors were honored and invited home whilst harmful spirits were warded off. People wore costumes and masks to disguise themselves as harmful spirits and thus avoid harm. So they would dress up as monsters so that the monsters wouldn't bother. Bonfires and food played a large part in the festivities. Food was prepared for the living and the dead. Food for the ancestors who were in no position to eat it was ritually shared with the less well off. The perceptible and apparent 
decline in the strength of the sun, listen to this, at this time of year was a source of anxiety for the Celts and the lighting of bonfires symbolized man's attempt to assist the sun on its journey across the skies. That's where the bonfires came in. They believed the sun had descended into the realm of the underworld. That's why it wasn't as hot as normal. And the forces of the underworld were in the ascendancy. So the, the, the forces of the underworld were coming up while the sun was descending. The Lord of the underworld, unfettered from the control of the sun because the sun couldn't control him because it was descending, now walked the earth and with him traveled all those creatures from the abode of the dead. Ghosts, fairies, and a host of other nondescript creatures went with him. Ghost. What ghost? Ghost of people you knew. Now, I know some of y'all like, wait, now, I don't believe in ghosts. Well, when I say ghosts, I'm talking about spirits that might have been in them. They don't die. They leave that body and come influence you. <laughs> so all the bad advice you used to get is talking to you again. Yeah, that abuse, that neglect, that bad dysfunctional upbringing comes back in that spirit this time of the year. Ghosts, fairies, and a host of others come with them. According to the Druid, Druidic tradition, these creatures roam the city on Halloween night and return to haunt the homes where they once lived. The only way current occupants of the house could free themselves from being haunted was to lay food and give shelter to the spirits during the night. I ain't feed no spirits. Amen. Folks do it. You see it at the Chinese restaurant. They have a cigarette and an orange down there for kabuki. I'm st I ain't playing. It's not kabuki. That's Japanese. But it's that whatever, whoever that is. Shane Chang. Is that his name? Kong Tao. What's his name? Boy, the more I talk, the more racist I get, huh? I, I need to stop. I'm really trying to say it. <laughs> Shang Chi. Oh no, that's the movie. He's down there and he's red and he got a cigarette and an orange and they keep lighting that cigarette. Y'all never seen that? Oh, you didn't look. You didn't look. Renetta, it's in there. It's on the counter or it's in the corner. Is that the nail shop too? They light a cigarette at the nail shop with all that acrylic smell in there, but they're going to blow that place up. I don't know how y'all get y'all's nails done. Man, that, that smell. And I, I think some of them are going for the acrylic smell. Man, they don't care what their nails look like. It's like the way they feel when they leave. Mm. But yeah, that little red thing down there, they, man, and if you mess with him, oh, I saw a little kid walk over there one time and try to take the orange. <laughs> Ooh, the, I'm not going to, let me move on. I was finna, it was finna get so racist. Y'all would have to just, just, just stop me. All right, anyway, but they, they stopped that kid. Don't you mess with that orange now. That's his orange. Boy, can I watch him eat it? I'd love to see that. No, you wouldn't. You'd know if you saw him eat it, you'd be calling on the name of Jesus. But yeah, but I ain't feed no spirits. But anyway, that's the Druids. That was back in the day. Now when you lay out candy, when you give candy, when you pass out candy, you're feeding demons on Halloween. That's where it came from. Yes, that's what you're doing whether you want to or not. Yes, demons. Baby Ruth, Kit Kat, whatever it is, you're feeding demons. That's what you're doing. You can't separate that part. 
If you trunking and treating, you are trunking and treating. The treat, you give them the treat so you don't get the trick. The trick is witchcraft. So you please them with a treat. Amen. So we as a church, we ain't trunking and treating. We're not trying to do a remix of demon feeding. Not trying to cute it up for the kids. We tell our kids we can't do it. No, you can't wear a mask. Amen. You better put on this Dead Sea clay mask. That's the only mask can be worn in this house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But that's the National Geographic. That's what the, the uh, that's from the National Geographic. But that's the role of the Druids in this holiday season. So listen, the sabotage spirit is the strongest in this season, and it will hinder us if we do not recognize and denounce it. Amen. Sabotage is trying to make you mess up what is going good. And it's strong in this season. Our trauma-based responses will overshadow the good that is happening to us. And we won't even see what we are doing to ourselves or our families while we introduce issues into good situations. Man, y'all better hear me. This is a spiritual battle. And we must be aware of it. Ephesians 6 and 12 said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? And against what? And against who? Now, does that sound like Halloween? Rulers of the darkness of this world? That's what you're wrestling against. Against spiritual wickedness. In high places. High don't mean height. High means status. Ranking. To some, God has done a work in and around them, but they do not even see it until sabotage has ruined it. So many people I know, sabotage just came, and I begged them, man, don't do this, dude. This is not God. Yes, it is. Well, now I know it was a spirit, and it was an influential spirit, but it wasn't God's spirit. And God stopped me in my tracks and said, man, every time this year, you get like that. Those are your emotions from your past. Thank God I don't make a decision, but I be feeling like it, J. Bryant. I'm right there. But it'll be a decision that I regret. I'll regret. Because I didn't discern what time it was. I'm just being real with you. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. After God has brought, up, brought them to a place and answered the prayers that, that they prayed, they will still allow the fam familiarity of trauma to come in and wreck their progress. Trauma feels familiar. Strife is familiar. If you grew up in bickering, and when it gets quiet in your house and y'all getting along, you got to do something to make it feel normal. Got a good friendship. You just got to roll your eyes. Why did you roll your eyes at her? I don't know. <laughs> Things were just going so good. And she just looked at you and just, mm. and she's like, what was that for? Because you make me sick just started something for no reason same time every year Luke 9 and 62 and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and what you can't look at somebody and say don't look back that 
that's not you anymore. Stop looking back. Because if you're looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. That's a store. I'm talking about they hiring. And they have we hiring on this sign with him. We hiring our past. Look at him. Sabotage can even mimic the voice of God. Uh oh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Sabotage can sound like God to you. Mm -hmm. You know, these spirits we talking about, they've been in the rim. They've been in the rim. They've been around this stuff. So they know how to mimic and make you think God has told you something and that is not God at all. But not only can it mimic the voice of God, but it can mimic a dead loved one. Boy. Yeah, that's necromancy. That's, that's, that's bad. Yeah. We don't talk to the dead and we don't let the dead talk to us. Amen. I don't even like at funerals when folks say, you know, start addressing the person in the casket. I understand you're emotional, but now hold up now. They don't hear you. Yeah, but it can be dead loved ones speaking. Because the spirits that once operated through the dead are roaming the earth more intensely during this season. They need bodies. They need somebody to talk to and influence. They lost their place. They lost that human host. So they're going to come bother you because you're familiar with that person. Person used to tell you to do things and talk to you or whatever the case. And they'll come sounding like that and you'll just believe, man, this is really what God wants me to do. And it's not. It's sabotage. We can believe it's good advice when it's actually sabotage speaking to us because things going so well for us is unfamiliar so if you grew up and you didn't see a good marriage you grew up you didn't see a good home you grew up you didn't see a good relationship and now you have one it takes a lot to ignore what you saw or didn't see that's okay Everybody good. That's all right. Y'all good? Okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just stop. Yeah, if you didn't have an example of it, it makes it harder to do it. Don't that make sense? Yeah. So when you didn't have a good example of it, when you saw divorce growing up, then every good old argument you have in your house, divorce comes up. It shouldn't. But it does, because that's what you saw. Let's just end this. What? Okay, I won't eat your chips no more. <laughs> How did we get to end this over the Cheetos? <laughs> but end this is an option when that's what you saw. You saw someone end it. Not only did you see them end it, but you saw they broke your heart when it ended. Because you saw two people that you love divide you in two. God brought you out of all of that and brought you to a good place. And now you want to tinker with the support beams. That's my saying. You got these support beams. And you start tinkering with them. You're going to knock the building down. We all go through seasons where we're feeling awake. Amen. That don't mean it's time to quit. 
And that don't mean it's time to listen to a spirit. Look at your calendar. And if you see October anywhere in the vicinity of what you're dealing with, then you know. And then look at last year, what happened. And the year before. First John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe what? Believe not every spirit, but trust the spirits whether they are from God. And don't try the spirit by your spirit because your spirit can't try the spirits. Your spirit is the reason it's all in question right now. <laughs> don't try the spirit by your spirit. Try the spirit by the word of God and the sound doctrine you're being taught. Amen. Sometimes you got to ask somebody about the spirit. Someone mature in the faith, more mature than you. Hey, brother, have you ever heard a spirit say, ooh? Um, yeah. Don't listen to that. Okay, okay, I won't, I won't. But try the spirit whether they are of God. Why? Because many what? False prophets. False words. The devil loves to cause trauma during this season of the year because it can cause us to reflect on it at the wrong time. So this time of year, if you're reflecting on trauma this time of year, you open in the door to the Roman spirits that have been summoned. People are summoning demons right now for Sam Hain, Sam Hain, and this time of year. Yeah, they start in August. And they stop in December. Conjuring, conjuring, conjuring. Crystals, vibrations, all of that. Bring it forth spirit. So if you get down on yourself, if you get in your head, if you get off the path, this is the time it'll get you. Sabotage. devil loves to cause trauma during this season of the year because it can cause us to reflect on it at the wrong time when evil spirits are at their peak of influence. Halloween, Sam Hain, is not the time to give in, give up, or overthink your progress. This is not the time to overthink your progress. Amen. This is the time when your prayer time should go up. This is the time when you should Get some counsel and talk to somebody. Get out of your head and out of your bedroom. Amen. Because sabotage is in there rocking in a chair. Waiting for you to do something to let him in. Like the sons of Issachar, you must understand the time so you will know what to do. First Chronicles 12 and 32 calls the children of Issachar saying that they were men that had understanding of the times to know, what is, to know what Israel ought to do. That's how you have to be this time of the year. You got to have an understanding of the times to know that these times are different. It's different right now. Look at somebody say it's different. Amen. Summary. I hope you learned something today. You know, the devil's just mad. He, you know, just because I said one thing in here, understand the times. He don't want you paying attention to the times because he don't want you to associate it with the times. Yeah. I know pastors that were doing very well 
serving the people, people of God, but their past trauma made them feel something was wrong when it wasn't. This is, this is the truth. And they walked away from their calling. Devil made them think something was wrong based on their past trauma, and they quit. They all over the internet, Jay, saying, I don't believe the Bible no more. I don't believe Christianity no more. I'm leaving the faith. After you done sung, rapped, traveled the country, made a career, and now you don't believe. And the stupid thing they do, they try to go R&B, and R&B don't want them. The devil like, I don't want you. When I tried to get you, you didn't want to come with me. You ain't making no more money. I, I never understood. Why you wait till you 40 and 50 to abandon the faith and to quit? Stop. Why? why? What, what happened? Well, that's past trauma. Made them feel something was wrong when it wasn't. So then they go to research and trying to find something wrong. Do you know most of the folks that's preaching against Christianity now researched to find something wrong with Christianity? Yeah, that trauma made them go look for something wrong with Christianity. And once they found it, they quit. Because you can find something wrong with it if you just, if you go on that, you know, go on that road. In your mind, you can find something wrong with it. Nothing's wrong with Christianity, but in your mind, you can't. Because you'll tie Christianity with your experience. And that's not how it works. We tie our Christianity with the word. Not our experience. Some of us had some bad examples. Some of us had some folks that we, you know, we shouldn't have watched. I know wives that were filled with God's spirit. And loving their roles in their home. I know these women. But because it was so foreign to their upbringing, it started to feel abnormal and they abandoned their marriages. Wrecked their marriage because it felt too right. And something has to be wrong. I know husbands that were doing well. Some of them was members here. Raising their families and being a good provider, protecting priests of their home. But because it was going so good, it just started to feel abnormal. So they allowed a jive relative to move in. You know, they had an opportunity to raise their children up in a functional situation but man no see I didn't grow up like that we had an open door policy and they bring in someone and make a functional situation dysfunctional how fair is that to the kids you don't have to clap you can have that community house if you want to That old saying, don't let the family you came from mess up the family that came from you. <laughs> but they were doing good. But because it was going so good and it just started feeling, and I need to do something. And I'll be talking to them, Elder, don't we talk? Man, don't do that. Don't, man, everything's going good, man. Hear me. If you think I'm the pastor, you put me over you, you put me there. I'm telling you what this is. Now, either you're going to believe that God speaks through me or you're not. On this one, no, nah, this one, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. I believe you normally, but this one, <laughs> I know what God is saying. All right, then. Start feeling abnormal and then you move a relative in or you took on the drama of siblings, parents, you know, you're getting advice from 
your sister, your brother, and they life ain't right. Getting advice from, you know, and it's good to talk to your parents, but some stuff they don't understand where you going, so you can't, I mean, it's a little different, nah. But, you introduce this drama, and you turn a functional situation into a dysfunctional one. I am preaching at ABC today. You know, you know and you know, I'm preaching, I'm preaching to me too. I, hey, I'm preaching to me. I'm glad I learned this, because now I'm watching the calendar. Sabotage is a spirit that thrives. Where? <laughs> how you feel. Sabotage messes with how you feeling. And when you start feeling some type of way, look next to you, he's sitting right there. Because he wants you to do something. Don't just feel it. Do something. Say something. Poke that bear. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's sitting next to you trying to make you do something. Because he thrives in the emotions. And he meddles with the past trauma of a person. So we must make sure we are standing strong against this spirit, especially during the season of Sam Haynes. Witches, warlocks, devils, demons, etc. are fighting hard during this period because they have greater access to our realm during this time. So let's make it our goal and purpose to worship and praise God for where we are and not allow the enemy to influence us, to mess up our progress. Amen? We are victorious in Jesus. And we must not allow sabotage to destroy it. Anybody victorious in Jesus? Amen. Man, I'm sorry. I'm not letting sabotage do it. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth do what? Take heed. That's what we're doing today. We are taking heed. Everyone stand to your feet. Take heed. That's the way God talked to me. Take heed, G. You make that decision right there, you will mess everything up. You can't see past that decision, but God can. So, try to hold. now that we know what season it is, we just need the power of God to get us through the season. Amen. 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 That's what you need. You want prayer? You want help with that? Come on up. We're going to trust and believe God. Man, man, man. I ain't tinkering with the support beams. I ain't messing up where God has me and my family. I'm just not going to do it. I got that feeling, but I keep getting that feeling. Now you know why and where that feeling is coming from. I thank God for truth. Truth like this just opens your eyes, makes you smarter. Oh, I love being smarter. Man, make me smarter. I want to be wiser in the things of the Lord. I want to know what the devil is up to. Some of y'all try to not concern yourself with the devil. That's, that don't make sense if you're a believer. He's your enemy. How you gonna skip over him? And just, well, you know, I'm really not concerned what the devil's doing. I am! That's who I'm fighting. Amen. And if I don't know how he's fighting, I don't know how to fight him. You see what I'm saying? I need to know what he's trying to do. I need to know when it's me Oh, when it's him working through me. And I'm going to do something about that. I'm not giving him that kind of access. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, if you tell me, we're going to do something about it. You may have to go on a fast. You may have to pray. You may have to take some time. But man, don't you let the devil sabotage your situation. Amen. You might be single right now because of sabotage. Because every time it gets going, it's a certain time of the year that it goes bad. It's because that spirit just breaches that great divide and comes and influences you to end it or to do something to think a certain way cause a misunderstanding you know sabotage will cause a miscommunication folk done broke up and all they had to do elder was talk all y'all had to do was talk uh, can we have marriage counseling no hold on marriage so y'all know how to talk Somebody was talking when you fell in love. Somebody was talking. Mac is talk. Somebody was macking and snacking. Y'all, y'all had to, I mean, burning the phone up back when I was young. You'd just be on the phone. Have, you'd be half sleeping, just set the phone on your head and just, you still there? Yep. I'm still there. Where, where, where would I go? You were sleeping together digitally. <laughs> you was in sin through the phone. <laughs> Give me a towel over there. Yeah. <laughs> but you knew you had you had something to say and folk break up. They just all they had to do was talk. Folks lead churches and all they had to do was make a friend. If you had made a friend, you'd be all right. Man, don't let sabotage make you do something dumb. Man, because you'll regret it. Sometimes it's hard to come back from it. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, because you are God. You are the everlasting great I am. You are God of the children of Israel that you opened up and parted a sea two times. You're the God when they stepped, even with Joshua, stepped off the shore. Their feet couldn't even get wet. Everywhere they stepped, the water would move. You stacked the water up. You just did great feats. You are that God. That's the God we're talking to. We know you are that great and mighty and we thank you Lord for even though you're that great and mighty you love us enough to come and help us with decisions like this help us with situations like this help us to not blow it help us to not mess up help us to make a better choice and do the right thing you are that God so we thank you Lord we thank you God for the conviction we thank you Father God for the word the truth the light, the path, the right way, the, just the answers to our questions. We thank you, Lord. And we pray right now against the spirit of sabotage. We speak against this spirit, sabotage, self-sabotage. We speak against the recurrence of it. We speak against the cycle that it's on. We speak against every time of this year, the whispers in our ears, the talking, the, 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 the convincing, the influence, all of the things that happen this time of the year. We rebuke the feeling. We rebuke all of it. The comfort that trauma brought us. We, we Father God, we rebuke it right now. And we cast this spirit out of our lives, out of our homes, out of our minds, out of our hearts. Father God, we won't allow this spirit to influence us. And Father, we pray that you build a wall right now of protection for us. Raise that standard against the enemy so that this spirit will have no influence during this time. We don't care what the witches and the warlocks are doing. We don't care what the Samhain festival and the Celts and all of that. None of that matters. Father God, we're going to stand with the power of the Holy Ghost. And we're going to stand against the kingdom of darkness. And we're not going to allow 
a decision to be made based on emotion, based on sabotage. But Father God, we will do it your way and continue to be blessed by you in Jesus' name. Now everyone lift your hands and God, thank you for where you've brought us. Thank you for where we are. 10 years ago, we couldn't see ourselves here. 15, 20 years ago, somebody told us we'd never be nothing. Somebody told us that we were failures. Somebody told us that we, our lives would be in shambles. And look at what you've done. You've blessed us. you got our children in here blessed. Our children know who you are. Our children know who you are. And for that, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for how far you brought us. And we got, we're not going to let sabotage pull us back. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Hug somebody. Hug somebody and say, I'm not listening to sabotage. I'm not listening to sabotage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On your way back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come too far. We've come too man, you do you know how far you've come? Come too far. <laughs>